Well, we're going to have our, our message, uh, I don't want to say to the children, but more uh, to the family. To the family. Um, I have written up a small catechism on one of the first statements in the Westminster in the 1689 London Confession, which asked this question. What is the chief end or the purpose of man? Why are we alive, children? And the Bible teaches, and it's summarized in the 1689 London Confession, that the chief end of man, or the reason we're alive, is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And that, that's what we've been studying. Now, last week, we were studying about how can we learn to glorify God? How can we learn to do that? And I, I gave you a verse in Psalms 119, 105 that goes like this. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If you want to truly glorify God, you cannot do that, children, apart from the knowledge of His Word. Parents, this is also for you. We have this saying among parents, and, and it was very popular in my father's generation, that they just worked and worked in order to give their children something they never had. Well, I want you to do the same thing, but not economically. I want you to provide for your children that they would have a roof over their head, that they would have food and clothing and be able to live with dignity. But the thing that you want to give your children is the Word of God. Will you send them to practice sports for hours a day? But how much time will you spend with them in the Word? Parents, to be consistent, we ought to be looking at somewhere around four, five, at least times a week in which we're in the Word with our children. Now, children, remember the illustration that I gave you? If your parents were to shut off all the lights, put you in your room, move around all the furniture, and then have you walk through the house in the dark, you would probably, well, you'd probably break your toe and, and say a lot of angry words. Because you would be bumping on things, you would be falling over furniture. But if they gave you a map and a little light to be able to read that map, then you could walk through the darkness and not hit any of that furniture. We need the Word of God. This world is filled with terrible things that can destroy your life. The only way to avoid that is the knowledge of the Word. Now, here's another thing, a verse that I want to give you, children, that is so very important. And parents, you need to be praying this for your children. In Psalms 86.11, David says, give me, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name, or give me an undivided heart. Now, children, I want to talk to you about your heart. This is very, very important. Listen to me. Do you know, children, how easy it is to get in trouble? It just seems to come natural, doesn't it? Isn't it amazing that no one had to teach you how to do things that were bad? Have, have your parents ever sat down with you and said, now listen, sit down, I'm going to teach you the proper way that you ought to talk, or I'm going to teach you how to do this, or I'm going to teach you how to be kind and nice. I hope they've done that. Your parents never had to sit you down in a chair and say, I'm going to teach you how to lie, or I'm going to teach you how to be selfish, or I'm going to teach you, because I know this is so hard for you, I'm going to teach you how to be foolish. They, they never had to do that. You were experts at all those things the moment you were born. Now, that sounds kind of funny, but in, in a sense, it's very dangerous, children. The world will tell you to follow your heart. Don't do it. Don't do it. Follow the Word of God. Now, children, here's what you need. You know how I told you that, that the more we see Jesus, the more beautiful He is, and the more we want to serve Him? That's true only if God has changed our hearts. If He's given us a new heart. Because a very evil heart, the more He sees of Jesus, the more He will hate Jesus. A very evil heart... The more he sees of God's law, the more he will hate God's law. So we need a new heart. Now, I don't want to oversimplify this, but I don't want to complicate it either. Parents and children, your cry out to God 
should be this. God, give me a new heart. Parents, when you pray for your children, look at Ezekiel 36. I challenge you to do that. They need a new heart. This is not just something they need to learn. Your children must be supernaturally changed by the power of God. Children, you need a new heart. You need a new heart. Listen, boys and girls. You need to realize, I'm going to tell you something that most people do not like. Are you ready? You need to realize there's something wrong with you. There's something inside you that makes you always want to do things that aren't right. That make you not want to share your toys. That make you want to fight when you don't get your way or angry. That needs to change. But it's not something that you can change on the outside. It's something that must be changed on the inside. And that's why you should say with the psalmist, give me a heart, a new heart, a heart that's undivided, a heart that really does trust you and love you and appreciate you. Isn't it amazing? Children, what's more important? Tell me. God or Legos? What's more important? God. But what do you think about more? If you're boys, Legos. Okay? Little girls, what's more important? God or your image in the mirror? What's more important? You say, well, God. Yeah, but you look, in your, you look at yourself in the mirror more than you look in God's Word. You see, there's something wrong with us. We know what's right, but we don't do it. We need a new heart. Jesus said this, Blessed are the pure in heart. What will happen to them? Does anybody know? They will see God. Now that word pure in heart there, you probably think it just means a, a beautiful white heart. Well, no, actually it means a heart that's not divided. A heart that's completely given to God. It doesn't have any mixture in it. Now this is a problem even after you become a Christian. What is that? Part of your heart will want the things of God. And it seems like part of you want other things. And sometimes God can even give you good gifts, wonderful gifts, and you start thinking about the gift more than you think about God. Dr. Piper... A very good preacher. This is what he said one time. He said, the greatest dangers in the Christian's life, they're not the enemies of God, but the gifts of God. God will give us a gift and we'll think about it more than we think about Him. Parents, please understand this as we close this sermon for the day. Your children as beautiful and precious as they ought to be to you, they have a heart that is radically depraved. And that heart needs to be changed. It's not changed, even though we believe in discipline, it's not changed through your discipline. It's not changed through your anger. It's not changed through all the rules in your home. As a matter of fact, you can kill your children with all those things. All those things are necessary, but those things will not make a child of God. Your children need the gospel. They need to hear about God's love and what God has done for them in Christ. And parents, they need to see it in you. My wife and I just listened to a teaching that was was very convicting to us. It was not a teaching about if you want to have godly children, you need to cut TV out even though you need to do that or you need to do this or you need to do that. No. They said one of the greatest, greatest, if, if, if not other than the gospel, the next greatest thing that must be in your home is joy and love. You don't want to create a bunch of Pharisees who continue on as Pharisees and go to hell, or a bunch of Pharisees that are Pharisees until they're 18, and then when they can get out of the house, they hate the religion of their parents. My home is not to be a prison with rules. It is a place of wild and hopefully pure joy. 
Joy. Joy. Now, mother and dad, this has got to be seen in you. They've got to see the joy of the Lord. The joy of the gospel. The life it brings. Not some kind of confining thing. But a thing that explodes life into your house. I want this God that my father and my mother have. Why? Because it creates such love and joy between them. And my dad and my mom, they love me. I, I don't know any other parents that love the way they do. You see? And then they say, how did this happen? You say, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. Jesus did this. The king of glory. Please don't think I'm being trite. The king of joy. King of life. Okay? All right. So it would be better to have our homes turned into very pious circuses than to be enslaving places full of rules. I'm just looking for a house big enough to have a zip line in. <laughs> the wildness and the joy of Christ. There is a joy in the journey and a light we can love on the way. There is a wonder and wildness to life and freedom for those who obey. Michael Card. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye. Please visit our website at heartcrymissionary.com. There you will find information about the ministry, our purpose, beliefs, and methodologies, and extensive information about the missionaries we are privileged to serve.